Een groet al alle jullie mensen van die Heer en die naam van Wonderlijk naam van die van Jezus Christus. Het is zo so baie goed om hier te wees en uh, thank you for giving me opportunity to stand before you. Ja, ik praat uh, Afrikaans, uh, niet baie nie, but dat was mijn beste taal bij school. <laughs> Um, it's so humbling to, to be here, um, to be with you, people of God, this morning. And I came along with my wife, my special wife, Sylvia. We have been together for 20 years. As you know, marriage can make or break you. Is that right? <laughs> you need the right person. If you carry great stuff, you, you need somebody great next to you. Yeah. And uh, she has been that woman to me. And I appreciate her. We are raising four children, God-loving children, and we are very excited. All of them are in the, uh, two of them are in the worship team. The boys are still growing. And we, we bring you greetings to, from our church. And we received bananas yesterday. <laughs> ha, today is going to be a great day at our church. <laughs> Thank you so much. We, <laughs> we are humbled by that. So um, let me also salute and submit under the leadership of the church, Pastors Chris and Rona, and Mom Dalene in absentia. Thank you for the servant heart you carry. And thank you for saving the church of God selflessly. This is what God wants. And if we keep on doing that, we will see the kingdom of God established beyond what we could imagine. Praise the Lord. Are you people happy? Yes. It's raining here and back home is raining. And I really believe uh, it's not only in the physical, but also in the spirit. It's going to rain. We got to prepare our, our roofs because rain can expose your house. Hello? <laughs> if your roof is leaking, you can only see it when it's raining. So let us prepare ourselves for the rain because God is about to pour out his greatness in our time in the mighty name of Jesus. This is what we're proclaiming, revival now. We want revival not, not in the future, but right now, we need revival. Church of God, I want to tell you that the church is unstoppable. It cannot be overcome by any force or opposition. The light that blows darkness away comes from the church. And we know that its ministry continues unhindered for generations. We are just one of those generations. And generations to come will conquer. Even at its weakest point, it still conquers wars. That's the church. That's who we are. Jesus is building the church. I mean, Jesus is interested in the church. The church is something special, something dear. In the heart of God. And we are those people called the church. My God. We are the people who know our God. And the Bible says the people who know their God shall be strong. God is not expecting us to be weak. He is expecting us to be strong because we know him. And because we are strong, we will do great exploits. In the mighty name of Jesus. My friends, let us prepare for great time in our nation. Do not look at things from the outside. You got to look with the eyes of the spirit. May God anoint your eyes today. May God anoint your heart to capture the things that God wants to do in the near future. I am optimistic. I am believing that greater things 
have yet to come in this nation. I will repeat that because some of you look hopeless. <laughs> I said greater things have yet to come in this nation. I will repeat this fight. Greater things have yet to come in this nation. Let's stand for that. Can we stand together for that? Can we believe together for that? That God is going to do amazing things in our time. Remember, this God we're talking about is the creator of the whole universe. Nothing surprises him. He's not surprised. Because he, you know, when you are overwhelmed, it's because you are not in control. But he is not overwhelmed because he is in total control. So I pray that today he will heal the land. And he will heal us. And he will open our eyes. We will see him in a new way. In the name of Jesus. So I'm going to be talking about the call to intimacy with God. The call to intimacy with God. I'm reading from the book of uh, Psalms 42. It says, uh, by the time, oh, by the way, what time do I finish? Uh, half past. All right. Thank you. As the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? So, this is a hard cry of the psalmist. This cry comes from a deep hunger, deep thirst for God. And I, I want to believe that this is the best time in life where we can hunger and thirst for God. Money has failed. Politics have failed. Everything has failed. You know, sometimes uh, crisis like we are in come uh, with a as a blessing in disguise because the focus from God had been shifted so many years ago to things. And we are engaged with things that cannot stand the test of the time. And God allows things to happen so that our focus can come back to him. And this is the best time to be intimate with God. Remember, this is the God you will be with forever. Forever. Are you prepared forever? <laughs> so, as the deer pants for the water brooks, so pants my soul for you, O oh God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. My friends, there is a stirring in the spirit. Right now, there is a stirring in the spirit. I'm not saying now like this hour. I mean the time we are in, the day we are in, because God works in days. So in the day we're living in, the Holy Spirit is stirring things. There is a stirring. The Holy Spirit is calling us to be intimate with God in our lives. Just like what is written in the book of Genesis 5.24, where it says, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. I really believe we're going to walk with God once again. Remember, God is not calling you to serve him. He's calling you to walk with him. It's a walk that is wanted. You know, you can serve in the absence of the master. Hello? You can serve in the absence because you know what to do. 
You wash the plate, water the garden, but you can't walk. You, you, you cannot, you cannot know the master unless you walk with him. And I feel like so many people are serving God, but they don't know God. Because they are not walking with him. And that is where religion takes over. When uh, in the absence of intimacy, religion takes over. And that is why a weak church cannot save a dying nation. I will repeat that one. A weak church cannot save a dying nation. And the church becomes weak when we forsake intimacy with God and chase after things, chase after religion. And I mean, there is a call to get back to this walk with God. Praise the Lord. And we will be taken. You know, we got to walk with God until we are taken. We are totally taken from the cult of self. Say the cult of self. Uh -huh, you can do better than that. Cult of self. It, ca it cannot be about us anymore. It must be all about him. We're not looking for more of God. We're looking for all of God. Because you see, the problem with more of God is that we still exist. <laughs> we still have our portion. But it, it must be all of him. And that is where Enoch pushed himself to. He pushed himself to a place where he was totally taken. Taken from self. Taken from self-agenda. Taken from self-confidence. Taken from self-plans. Taken from self, self, self. Yeah. We got to come to arrive at that place where we're no longer visible. Only him yeah. is visible. Yeah. We got to be taken. So now, what are the indicators of the demand for intimacy with God? How can you know that the Holy Spirit is drawing you to that place of intimacy? I have put down several things here, and I want us to discuss them. And number one is uncompromised holiness. That's the first one. Uncompromised holiness. I just believe you. Many of you are not writing. Um, I just trust your brains. <laughs> you know, I'm a lecturer, so I'm with student, students most of the time, so I see them writing. I give them modules, but they still write. <laughs> I trust your intelligence. Uncompromised holiness. It's in the book of Hebrews 12, verse 14, where it says, Pursue peace and holiness, without which no one will see God. So it says, we got to pursue. If you have to pursue, you got to chase. I read a book many years ago called God Chases. So if you have to pursue something, it means this thing is not easily attained. But you've got to chase it. And it's called holiness. And it says, without this thing called holiness, you can't see God. You can't see God in your life. You can't see God in your marriage. You can't see God in your finances. You can't see God in the key areas of your life. That is why you got to pursue this thing called holiness. So, but the question becomes, what is holiness? Is it to walk like a Christian? <laughs> or to carry a huge Bible? What's holiness? 
Holiness is about making decisions daily to live a life that is submitted to the word of God. I said holiness is making decisions daily to live in submission to the word of God. In other words, you're not permanently holy. You've got to make decisions on a daily basis. Because your standards will be challenged on a daily basis. Are we in agreement? So, today you may win, but tomorrow there's a challenge. Against your life and its standards. But when you choose to obey God, tomorrow again, you become holy. So, when the Holy Spirit is training, you find that you are forced. You, you, there is an edge. There is a pull on the inside to say, God, I want to be pleasing to you totally in every area of my life. You cannot be bought with money. Hello? You cannot be influenced by temporary pledges. Why? There's an edge on the inside. You want to be pleasing to God. So that's when the Spirit of God is stirring. And number two. Fervent prayer. I didn't just say prayer. I said fervent. Because there is a difference. There's casual prayer, right? <laughs> but there's also fervent prayer. This is the kind of prayer that Jesus prayed when he was faced with the cross. The Bible says he, he prayed and there were drops of water from his face and it was like drops of blood. He was passionate. It was intensive prayer. Not the prayer before you eat. Not the prayer before you sleep. But it's a, a strong prayer. And I want to believe that in the days we're living in, God is going to awaken that spirit of prayer. And you're going to find yourself alone hands lifted on your knees lying down not never caring anymore because you want him and you want him alone this is not a group initiative this is going to be personal god does not make meetings with a group he meets people alone so this is one of the indicators of the, the fact that the Spirit is stirring you. And in other words, you are, you are being chosen. You are being appointed to become a carrier of revival. Because you see, the main word we got to talk about right now is revival. And this is, this we can't be waiting for now. This is what we, we need to, to start. Hello? Yeah, it's, it's like opportunities. You don't hunt for, for opportunities. You create them. You got, we got to spark revival. And these are the tools that can help us to spark revival in our time. Yeah. Fervent prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And I want to go quickly to the third one. It's fasting. You heard right? I said fasting. I really sense that God is calling his body back to fasting. Yeah? Where we show God, I know fasting does not move God. That's truth, true truth. Fasting doesn't move God. But through fasting, we move ourselves towards God. Are you understanding? 
Through fasting, we move ourselves towards God. You see, the thing is, if we make room, God will occupy. God is ready. But are we ready? <laughs> That's why if you, you study the book of Matthew uh, chapter 16, uh, it, it says, uh, what you, you I, I'll give to you the keys of the kingdom. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Where is the initiative? It's down here. Binding is here, then binding there. Losing is here, then losing there. So God is saying, don't wait for me. I'm waiting for you. When you make a room, I will occupy. When you start, I will, I will bless. I will bless. So, but we see that through fasting, in the book of Acts chapter 13, when they fasted, the Holy Spirit spoke. He said, uh, select for me Barnabas and Saul to go and do the work I have called them for. So they, they, they were already told. They already knew what God wanted to do. But they were <laughs> postponing. If I can put it like that. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. Because so many people know what to do. But so many people are not ready to start. Yeah. Sometimes they don't want to start for fear to fail. Because you see, you ask yourself, if I start and I fail, what will happen? And that's why you don't start. So the Holy Spirit said during prayer and fasting, tell them to go and do. And they, they, they fasted again and they laid hands on them. So to me, fasting is, is very important because, you see, it, uh, it silences the flesh yeah. and opens the spiritual portals. Yeah. Fasting silences the flesh and opens the spiritual portals. There are portals in the spirit because there are things that are ready in heaven that are needed to be to be released from heaven. Yeah. But there must be portals to bring them down. Yeah. yeah. And we, we see these portals, especially when we are, we are fasting. So I call you my sister, my brother. Consider. <laughs> Don't say the spirit wanted you to fast. Start fasting. Yeah. You see, so many times we blame the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has not told me. <laughs> he is waiting for you yeah. to start. Yeah. If you make room, he will occupy. That's what I said. Yeah. And the, 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 the fourth one is intense level of worship. This is another indicator that the Spirit is staring you for revival because he wants you to be a carrier of the move of God. He wants you to be an extraordinary person. Yeah. Not just an ordinary Christian. Come on, forget about ordinary Christianity. Mm -hmm. We've got to push this thing to the next level. Yeah. We must forget about church, work, home. Church, work, home. We've got to go to the next level. Where the kingdom advances. Yeah. yeah. Praise the Lord. So many times we serve God, we, we work for God in our tents. Hello? Yeah. We got to, to break down that barrier. So, intense level of worship. And this kind of worship, I'm not talking about songs. You can worship without a song. Worship is not singing. Hello? I'm a musician myself. But worship has nothing to do with singing. But this intense level of worship is a result of addiction with the presence of God. You find that your heart is addicted with the presence of God. You're like David. You're saying, 
in your presence is fullness of joy. Do not cast me out of your presence. You look like Moses. If your presence does not go before us, we're not going anywhere. You, you have come to a place where you, you understand the value of the presence of God. Church, <laughs> unless we come to that level, where the presence of God becomes an addiction, there will be no God encounters. Let me repeat that one. Unless we come to that level where, by the way, there is only one addiction that is allowed. It's addiction with the presence of God. And when we come to that level where we are addicted with the presence of God, God encounters become the order of the day. Yeah. You escape from being a Christian who know God by just reading the Bible. You now meet God. <laughs> Hello? You now become a child of God who has met God. And that, that is why you become strong. Nobody can separate you from an experience. Hello? But knowledge can change. Am I right? You can, we, we, read, we Christians read the same Bible, interpret it differently, and we keep on changing in our interpretation. But let me tell you, if you experience God encounter, nothing takes that away. But God encounter is a product of addiction with the presence of God that leads you to a new and higher level of worship. And the last one on this, it's um, stability of life. Stable life. You know, so, so many people are not stable. <laughs> you leave them here yesterday, you find them there. You know, they keep shifting. You know, they even forget what you agreed. Even if you sign. You have to bring the paper to remind them. <laughs> hey, we human creatures are different. <laughs> Church of God. God does not automatically trust you. He loves you. But that has nothing to do with trust. Hello? I will repeat that. It's like a revelation to some of you. <laughs> God loves you. But you have to earn trust from God. And when do you earn that trust? When your life is stable. And what tells God your life is stable? Obedience. Yeah. He tells you, you don't pray, you do. <laughs> Mary says, whatever he tells you, do. Not pray about it. Yeah. And so many people who say, I want to pray about it, they don't pray. <laughs> Hello? They say, I'm going to be praying about it, and they're, they're not going to be praying about it. Them and prayer are very serious enemies. Church of God, I think at this time we need stable lives in the kingdom of God. Because when you are stable, you are reliable. When you are stable, you can be trusted with bigger things. Hello? Stable lives. Produce 
meaningful progress in the kingdom of God. Stable lives produce meaningful progress in the kingdom of God. I really appreciate that as church, we do what politicians can't do. We can gather people on every Sunday. Hello? Politicians have no power to do that. That is why they want to come to church during elections. They see our strength. But at the same time, coming together on a Sunday does not advance the kingdom. Yeah? Coming together like this does not advance the kingdom. Go to Mike's kitchen now. It's fuller than there, than here. They are making impact. Church of God, let me finish by talking about the results of intimacy with God. Can we do that? The results of intimacy. I was talking about indicators. How will you know that, oh, I still have got some 15 minutes. Thank you so very much. Are we getting something today? Are you sure you're getting something? Yeah, because it, it would be useless for me to come here and you get nothing. <laughs> Results of intimacy with God. Anything that does not yield result is useless. Is that right? So if something is important, it must show by the results. And that is why intimacy with God must produce results. And I, for one, I don't have enough time to tell you that walking with God, what walking with God has done in my life. I'm so humbled by the kind of the God I walk with. Yeah. No disappointments, no regrets. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2. And we're going to read from verse 41 to verse 47. And I'll give you three attempts, and we are done. It says um, Then those who gladly received it, his word, this is Peter, were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. If that happens to us, we will have a problem. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. I won't touch that today. And fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Then fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together and had all things in common and sold their possessions and goods and divided them among all as anyone had need. So continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. I want to look at three things from these scriptures that we have read to this, this morning. The first one is, I'm talking about the results of intimacy with God. Amen? As now a corporate church, it will bring unity at heart and purpose. Unity at heart and purpose. It's so difficult to unite. It's so, so difficult to walk together as children of the Father God. The reason is 
people are not intimate with God. But when we are intimate with God, we find that the first thing that will manifest will be unity. And not just unity, but unity at heart and in purpose. That's a needed dimension in today's church. Because in today's church, God is for all, but everyone is for himself. Hello? So, unity is a product of selflessness. Selflessness. You have come to the end of self. So, that means I have to stop living for my rights and begin to live for kingdom advancement. I have to stop living for my rights and begin to live for kingdom advancement. This aspect of the kingdom must be the main important thing in our hearts. I mean the kingdom of God. Because all other kingdoms will, will vanish. Is that right? And it's clear they will vanish. Yeah. But the kingdom of God will rise. So, if I can't stop living for my rights... To the extent that it deprives the kingdom of God from being advanced. What life am, am I living for? What life? My friends, I really respect the things of this world because they help us to advance the kingdom of God. But apart from that, they are useless. You live your life, gather millions, you die. They bury you and remain with the millions. <laughs> you chase money all your life. And when you catch it, you go. It remains. Yeah? Is that what you're living for? Is that what you can break about? You live your life to be a big person, acknowledge the leader, then they appoint you, maybe president of the nation, and they appoint guards to guard you. But after that, you like anybody else. You go to check us, no security guard. <laughs> you just you. My friends, we can't live for self. There's a higher calling to live for the kingdom of God. So we got to destroy all selfishness and embrace kingdom life. In Jesus' mighty name. I have to consider the interests of others and seek to be a blessing to them. I must become a blessing to other people. And that means I must see their needs. Am I right? I must see their needs in order for me to become a blessing to them. If I can't see, if all I see is me, and you can hear it from in my prayers. Lord, I pray for I, for me, and mine. <laughs> That's how some prayers go. I pray for me. I pray for mine, God. Hey. To God, that is not prayer. Hey, it's not automatical that God will hear your prayer. He has so much to do. Yeah, he, he only hears correct prayers. <laughs> I can speak for him. <laughs> the interests of others. Num number three, I have to position myself to be a giver, not a receiver. I'm talking about unity at the heart and in purpose. I got to position myself as a giver, not a receiver. I can't, I mustn't carry the give me mentality. When I come to a place, I must ask myself, what can I do here? How can I improve lives here? Because I, I am a carrier of God, the creator of everything. 
So my friends, that will make unity something that works. But if unity is about gaining, creating opportunities to take from others, then that can't be unity. So I'm not a receiver, I'm a giver. But because I'm a giver, I receive more. Huh? <laughs> when the list of those that receive from me increase, also the supply. Uh -huh. The supply increases. My, the supply is measured by the The recipient. Now, you are blessed to become a blessing. Yeah. You are the middleman between God and man. God gives you and he knows it's going to reach the destination. Yeah. That's the result of intimacy. And number two. The manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, you know... Signs and wonders were performed by the hands of the apostles. Many times we want the spirit of God to manifest. But we forget. It's so difficult for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit to happen where there is no unity. Unity prepares the platform for the power of the Holy Spirit. That is why you hear this. They were in one accord. They were in, in agreement. They were one. They were one. We got to be one in order for us to see the power. Because together we become the channel for the power of the Holy Spirit. So that is why this thing is not about superstars. It's not about single-handed achievements. It's about us. The church. The church must bring healing. The church must perform miracles. That is why the church must become one. So signs and wonders will be performed. Healing and miracles will be received. And I really sense in my heart that to some of you, God is going to heal your relationship with him today. God is, gonna, is concerned about your work with him. And he's going to heal you. And receive that healing. Receive that healing in Jesus' name. May that be your miracle today. That he heals your walk with him. The last thing I want to address right now is, it says uh, in verse 47, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. It feels like the church was waiting and everybody was coming. But you see, it's not like that. I believe where there is intimacy, there will be radical evangelism. Hello? Radical evangelism. Most of the churches are waiting for things to happen. Unfortunately, things don't happen by themselves. Hello? I will repeat. Things do not happen by themselves. Somebody must make things happen. It's not like they were just sitting in the congregation and they saw people coming. They were doing something. <laughs> yeah. So I want to believe there will be a strategic invasion in the society. Strategic invasion in the society. And such invasion would target one, the youth. What is the church doing to reach for the youth? Yeah. Do we have youth in Luitrithat? Are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> What is the church doing to reach, not to wait for, to reach the youth? I 
Remember, if the church loses the youth, that church has no future. It can have facility like we do here, but no future. <laughs> That's what so many churches do. They spend time developing property, which is good. Which is good. But the assignment is not property. The assignment is people. Jesus did not die for property. Hello? Jesus did not die for a good chair. He died for people. What is the church doing to reach the youth? I hope this is meaningful. Yeah. I believe this invasion will reach the parents. So many parents are confused about parenting right now. Will somebody start a program from the church that will enable us to reach the parents? I believe the strategic invasion will I impact the business sector. Because so many business owners are confused right now. And the wisdom, the Bible tells me that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall rise above all other mountains. And to me, it means the church will impact all seven mountains of influence. Because we have enough in the church. We may not be using, but we have enough. Do we, shall we have a strategic leader who is deployed, who is sent like Paul and Barnabas into the marketplace? To send a message of reformation. I believe. <laughs> the church. The invasion. The, the invasion will. Touch the political domain. In Jesus name. That we will see impact on the new leaders. The, the clean leaders will rise from the church. It's no use to complain sitting. You got to be manufacturing a generation of leaders. And the last thing, I believe community projects will have the ambassadors from the church to help them stand. May we respond positively to the call of intimacy with God. You can't answer this call and remain a passive Christian or a passive church. Let the move of God start in the church. I said, let the move of God start in the church. When we individually choose to be intimate with God in our corners, when we come together as people who are intimate with God, Change will happen in Jesus' mighty name. I would love to ask uh, Pastor Rona to pray for us. Shall we stand and believe that God, I believe this message is relevant to, to us this morning. I will ask uh, our dearest mother to to pray for us in Jesus' name. Yes, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, this morning we just want to come and give ourselves to you. We want to humble ourselves and say, God, not more, but all of you in this day. Come and consume us with your fire, your love, your compassion for us. And Holy Spirit, will you touch our spiritual eyes to see as you see and to hear the voice of our Father, that we will build your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven, that we will be builders of your kingdom, commit ourselves to give ourselves here on earth to establish your kingdom because that is your heart. And therefore, Holy Spirit, we want to pray, especially this morning for our church. Father, thank you that you start a fire in each of us hearts, that we will have a a desire to pursue intimacy 
with you, Father God. Not for things, but because of who you are. And Father, this morning especially, I want to pray for our youth as well. Father, that you will give us a desire in our hearts, like Pastor Petrus just mentioned and preached to us, that, that we will pursue our youth even, that we will be the starters of a revival in our hearts, that we will, won't be waiting for things to happen, but that we will be the sent ones that make things happen through your Holy Spirit. And again, we want to say, Father God, Jesus, this is your church. Come and build your church. And we, as the living stones, humbly submit to the calling in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.